Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 8th, 2022, around 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the threat for two hurricanes to be impacting land over the next couple of days. What do you need to know this week? Well, it's going to jump straight into everything. Taking a weather look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that in the Atlantic Basin, we are down to one storm out there, thank goodness. We have Hurricane Earl right now, which is south of Bermuda. This is moving off towards the north over the next couple of days, getting very close to Bermuda, then making a turn towards the northeast and out to sea it goes. We also have Invest Area 95L, and then a new tropical disturbance with a 30% chance of development over the next five days as this system moves generally off towards the west-northwest here. And we'll have to see if this goes on to try to develop at all, but models are not really enthusiastic about this. Look here on the graphical tropical weather outlook. We can see this here again right now. Danielle is way off the top of the screen here. This is now a post-tropical cyclone and no more advisories are being issued. Again, Category 2 Hurricane Earl moving close to Bermuda. Then two systems, 95L with a high percentage of development and this new system back here with a 30% chance over the next couple of days. We'll take a look at Hurricane Earl this afternoon. We noticed that the overall structure has become way better organized, even from what it was yesterday. First of all, we noticed that convection is now wrapping around on either side of the circulation today. We actually notice that we actually finally have what seems to be an attempt of a clearing eye structure right now. This is at about the 29 north. This is about 30 north right here. And so this is just moving due northward right now. And then eventually we'll make that turn towards the north and east here. And then once it does so, again, this is going to pass within a couple hundred miles of Bermuda. But notice the large size of this circulation here. The rain bands are already starting to impact portions of Bermuda today. But look at the reconnaissance aircraft that was in there from earlier. We notice that the wind field is quite large at this point. We notice that there's a large area of tropical storm force winds that extend well away from the circulation here and hurricane force winds that extend pretty far out as well. And so all of this will be moving generally towards the north northeast like this. And so that hurricane force wind field could get pretty close to Bermuda. This is the official track forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Again, right now sustained winds of 105 miles per hour moving off towards the north northeast at 13. This is still expected to become a category four hurricane sometime tomorrow evening. But more importantly for the island of Bermuda, there is a hurricane watch and a tropical storm warning in effect. As again, tropical storm conditions are expected within the next about 24 hours, beginning probably as, as early as or later this afternoon. And then we could also have some hurricane conditions possible. Sustained winds probably around 45 to 50 miles per hour. Gusts could be as high as 70 to 75 miles per hour. So there's certainly the potential for some hurricane conditions there on the island of Bermuda over the next about 24 hours or so. Now, so we'll be rapidly moving away from land and will become a post-tropical cyclone sometime Saturday evening as it is undergoing that extra-tropical transition. We also have another hurricane out there impacting land today. In the East Pacific Basin, we have Hurricane K. Maximum sustained winds are coming down quite substantially now. We notice that today the overall circulation is very devoid of convection, especially on the western side. We are talking about this several days ago that the environmental conditions and sea surface temperature profile is not necessarily that favorable for uh, strengthening of any system and in fact it favors weakening and today we are seeing that however today the low level circulation is very close to land here this is the land mass here of the baja peninsula and this is moving it seems like due north on this trajectory it seems like this will be eventually making landfall sometime today in the baja peninsula this is a lot further east than what we are expecting to see we are expected to see a circulation that would pass something like that. We're seeing a circulation pass almost due north, and that will bring it inland today across portions of the Baja Peninsula, assuming it doesn't make a very sharp turn. Either way, it seems like a landfall of the system is imminent within a few hours. Either way, tropical storm and hurricane conditions are likely today for portions of the Baja Peninsula. Tropical storm warnings are in effect all the way over into the coast here of coastal Mexico at this point. And then for the Cabo San Lucas Resort area, still some gusty winds and maybe some heavy rainfall, but the worst of the conditions are now over. And so now we will be turning our attention down there again. Gusty winds, heavy rainfall, the potential for mudslides, uh, flash flooding issues certainly will be a problem later today. Now also in the Atlantic Basin, we have Invest Area 95L. We were just talking about that system Again, the system today is very devoid of any significant convection. We notice that most of the deeper convection is actually 
well towards the northeast here, but we notice that there is a low level circulation and this low level circulation, if it can fire enough convection for six to 12 hours, this actually could become a tropical cyclone as it is moving off generally towards the west and northwest like this. Uh, we notice the problem is there's a lot of dry stable air to the north trying to wrap around the circulation and it's not really helping. You notice that the southern side doesn't have any sort of convective elements at all. And so that's not really going to be favorable for the system. Regardless, though, this still does have a chance at developing at least for the next about 36 hours or so. But then environmental conditions will become unfavorable. Look at the GFS forecast here. This is the 060 run valid. This is the analysis period 2 a.m. this morning. Again, our two players on the board now, extra tropical, post-tropical cyclone Danielle and Hurricane Earl. This is Invest Area 95L down there. We notice that, again, Earl could actually stall out uh, near Atlantic Canada to the northeast of Newfoundland here in Atlantic Canada over the next couple of days. Potential for some potential heavy rainfall across this area, across portions of the far northern Atlantic Canada region. This is actually possible as it progresses through the next several days on the backside of the circulation. And we could also see the remnants or what is supposedly the remnants of Danielle potentially impacting uh, Europe and, and Spain over the next couple of days here. So we'll have to watch for potential impacts there. We had noticed in the Atlantic Basin though, there's absolutely nothing forecast on the GFS here. And actually most of the activity goes on to be in the East Pacific Basin with multiple tropical cyclones forming there. However, in the European ensembles, there definitely seems to be an uptick in tropical activity. We notice that this tropical wave that we are talking about, the 30% chance here, that goes on to try to develop. And we have another wave down here that goes on to try to develop as well within the next five days. Now, again, both of these systems will have to monitor. Again, right now, it doesn't seem like there will be any significant land impacts here. One of the reasons for that, if we jump up to the 500 millibar height anomalies here, there's a lot of troughing out here in the east part of the Atlantic. This is in response from Earl and Danielle, just a lot of troughing in the east, the eastern Atlantic. And that's creating all of this weakness in the subtropical ridge out there. So we'll have to see, and that really doesn't change much at all. Uh, finally, by the end of the forecast period, though, it seems like we may actually finally have that long-awaited ridge setting up over Atlantic Canada and over the subtropical Atlantic. However, there is still some weaknesses in between here as well. So we'll have to kind of just see how things play out with time. Either way, I'm not seeing any real threats over the next uh, six to 10 days or so besides Earl and Kay in the immediate term. So obviously that is some good news. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.